All right, I wanted to uh, talk piston rings for a little bit because I just watched a buddy of mine snap a ring when he was uh, putting it on his piston. And then um, when you do snap a ring on a new set, you have to buy a whole new set. So no one really wants to do that. So anyway, there's a few techniques that I use when I put my rings on by hand that uh, seem to work well. I've never snapped a ring yet, so and I'll go over those. So, But what you want to do before you do anything with putting your rings on your piston is you want to check your ring gap and what you would do is I got an old block down here. What you would do is you would put your ring into your piston um, and when you do that you would slide it in like here's the C and you'd put it in there and then once you got it into the bore you'd rotate it in and then you'd use your piston and push the uh, ring down in there about an inch or two and then uh, you check it with a feeler gauge and uh, generally specs come with your uh, piston rings on um, how much how much clearance you want to have in between but um, anywho so if that all checks out and you're within spec then you're good to go you don't want them real tight in the bore obviously you know you want them within spec because if they're real tight then when they heat up from heat expansion they'll come together and they'll break or if they're too loose obviously you'll you might burn a little oil so but you really don't want to be too tight so you want to stay away from that but anyway so there's a few things I do here and I might as well try and situate the recording device there we go now what I like to do when I take them off is you just get a lip off and oh yeah you want to uh, make sure that you have your piston mounted in a good spot where it's not going to move around on you. It makes the job a lot easier. So anyway you get the lip up like this and you just take it and you kind of work it around and then you just rotate it on out of there and you don't scratch the side of the piston and you're out. So I'll take these off and I'll put them back on. So anyway, step over here where I got some leverage. So you'd come up and then you'd pull your piston ring out and then do your little spin dance on it and you're out. And you want to try and not bend these a whole lot because uh, your compression rings are very brittle so and on this uh, this go-kart piston they're not as brittle as on a normal motor but on your uh, you know what you use normally but anywho my point is is you want to try and not get a lot of torsion into them so and then when you go to install your pistons there's usually going to be instructions and if you use a good set of pistons they'll usually have markings on which which side faces up and generally there's going to be a top compression ring and a bottom compression ring so if you get a quality compression ring set they'll usually have that all laid out for you and you if you follow instructions you'll usually not screw it up if you have any intelligence to you at all but uh and also if you get a good quality set then um usually you don't have any problems with size but I can't stress enough you always want to check all your piston rings to make sure they're within spec before you assemble your motor so anywho and to put them back on all you would do is you get it into the groove there and then you just kinda you get you put it you put the end in and then you kinda push out and then it, it kinda gets the ring in an oval shape and it'll slip right in there just like, oops, there we go, just like that. So, we'll go again. Maybe we can uh, get an aerial view, but I'm not sure. So you want to get your end started in there. And then you just, we'll get it where we can, where everyone can see it here. top view. So you would get your end in like so and then 
what you would do is pull it out so it's almost in like an oval shape and it wraps right around there and hops right in and it's as simple as that so it's really not that hard but if you don't know what you're doing you can uh, really mess this process up your oiling rings you know they're uh, they're a little less brittle but your compression rings are usually very brittle they're not designed to really bend a whole lot so you have to be careful but um, anywho just pay attention to your markings and usually it, they'll come with instructions your rings will and if you read them and follow them carefully you'll be just fine so anywho and um, you know some people they run them 180 degrees off and I'll probably uh, I'll probably post two pictures here of how I've read it to do from Fords and how I've read it in Chevrolet books to do it. They all have different ways they like to have their rings, but as long as you don't have them lined up, at least you're, you know, some of the way off, you're usually good. But I'll post two pictures that uh, show different instructions on how to do that and where they're supposed to be seated. But really that's all it takes to put the rings on a piston. So you just want to take your time. It can be a little tedious. So if you take your time and you don't snap any, you'll obviously be better off in the end. So there you have it.